1997 was a year where we see the rise of the South, led by Scarface, Missy Elliott, Mia X, Mystical, MJG, and Master P. We'll get great debuts from Capone and Noriega, Timbaland and Magoo, MJG, Missy Elliott, and Will Smith. We'll get legendary returns from EPMD, Rakim, and KRS-One. OC will drop the Sleeper Album of the Year. For the third year in a row, we lose a legend. Scarface, The Wu-Tang Clan, Biggie and Twister drop classics while duking it out with Mace, Bone Thugs and Harmony, Busta Rhymes, and P. Diddy for Album of the Year. 1997 will kick off with the release of the Rhyme and Breeze and soundtrack. Highlights will include the single Nothing But The Cavi by Mike Ten and The Dog Pound that was pretty dope, Wild Hop by Busta Rhymes and The Tribe Called Quest, Reason For Rhyme by 8 Ball and MJG, Is There A Heaven For A Gangster by Master P, The Way It Is by Guru and Group Home and more. This is a pretty good soundtrack that was a successful album going gold and peaking at number 16 on the Billboard 200 and number 1 on the top R&B chart. January will close with two big releases. First we get the debut album from Camp Low with Uptown Saturday Night. Highlights include their classic single Lucini. This is one of the best songs of the year that has a catchy hook along with dope beats and lyrics to give you everything that you need. Other highlights include Park Joint, B-Side to Hollywood, Cooley High, that's another banger, Black Nostalgic, and more. This is a dope album that I think was underrated. It had some success peaking at number 27 on the Billboard 200 and number 6 on the top R&B and hip hop chart. Our other release of the day will be the second edition of No Limit successful West Coast Bad Boys compilation series West Coast Bad Boys Volume 2. Highlights include One Life to Live by Sibo, That's What I Said by Brother Lynch Hung, Roll Your Vogues by Selsky, Get the Best Hand by All from the Eye and the Comrades and more. The album was another success going gold and peaked at number 8 on the Billboard 200 and number 6 on the top R&B and hip hop chart. Fresh off of having the most impressive feature on Tupac's classic All Eyes On Me, West Coast vet Sibo returned to open February with his third album, Life To Live. Highlights include Menace featuring Mac Maul, Riding On My Bumper, I Can't See The Light, I'm A Fool, One Life To Live and more. This is another good album from Sibo that once again is underrated but has some success peaking at number 65 on the Billboard 200 and number 12 on the top R&B and hip hop chart. Sebo would stay busy and return in 98 with another album. February 11th would give us two good compilation albums. First accomplished producer Frankie Cutlass returned with his sophomore album Politics and Bull. Highlights include Feel the Vibe by Rampage, Doo-Wop and Helter Skelter, Focus by The Lost Boys and M.O.P., Games by Rock City O, The Cypher Part 3 by The Juice Crew, featuring Craig G, Roxanne Shante, Big Daddy Kane, and Biz Markie that was pretty dope, and more. This is a pretty good album that had moderate success peaking at number 129 on the Billboard 200 and number 32 on the top R&B and hip hop chart. Frankie will continue working with many of hip hop's finest and return in the 2000s releasing more albums. Our other release of the day will come from legendary DJ Funk Master Flex, who returned with this mixtape volume 2, 60 Minutes of Funk. It includes mixes to songs that were pretty popular at the time, like Tour by Capleton and Let Me Clear My Throat by DJ Cool. It also had many freestyles from Grace of the Time, including Jay-Z, Nas, The Boot Camp Click, The Notorious B.I.G. and The Locks. This is a dope album that included a good blend of mixes and a lot of refreshing freestyles to catch your ear with many dope lines. The album was a success going gold and peaking at number 33 on the Billboard 200 and number 19 on the top R&B and hip hop chart. Flex would drop more successful albums and continues his illustrious radio and DJ career as one of hip hop's greatest DJs. 
New Orleans Great's True returned with their fourth album, True to the Game. The album was a double CD led by classic No Limit Soldiers. This is one of, if not the best song released by No Limit and one of the best of the year. Other highlights include There They Go, Feds, What They Call Us, Swamp In, Heaven For A Gangster, Freak H's, Once Upon A Time and more. This is my favorite album by True and it had a lot of success going double platinum and peaked at number 8 on the Billboard 200 and number 2 on the top R&B and hip hop chart. Master P and No Limit were going into their peak run, stringing together multiple hit albums before dominating the industry with multiple album releases each month, setting an example for modern artists with releasing as much music as possible when the spotlight is on you. March would open with the release of Cypress Hill's DJ DJ Muggs' compilation, Soul Assassins Chapter 1. Highlights include Puppet Master by Dr. Dre and Be Real, Decisions, Decisions by Goody Mob, It Could Happen to You by Mob Deep, New York Undercover by Call of the Wild and more. The album has success peaking at number 20 on the Billboard 200 and number 6 on the top R&B and hip hop chart. The Soul Assassin series will be a success for DJ Muggs as a side project from Cypress Hill during the group's downtimes. On March 11th, we get two releases from the South. First, we get the return of Atlanta Vets Ghetto Mafia with their album Straight From The Deck. Highlights include In The Paint, Straight From The Deck That's Dope, Fool I Got Yay, Don't Turn Your Back, I Can Feel It and More. This album would see Ghetto Mafia take a step forward, gaining in popularity and making the charts peaking at number 49 on the top R&B and hip hop chart. They would return in 98 and take another step forward with another good album. Our other release of the day will come from the legend, Scarface, with this classic album, The Untouchable. Highlights include the classic singles Mary Jane and Smile featuring the recently deceased Tupac, which are two of the biggest songs in hip-hop history and Scarface's most popular songs. Scarface was already on the path to being a legend, but didn't have those signature hits until Mary Jane and Smile. Face released hits that stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with Tupac's and Biggie's, which got an added boost due to their recent passings. Not only were his singles great, his album was just as good as theirs as well. There was Southside, a song with one verse that makes you wish there was more. The Untouchable, that's another amazing song. No Warning, Money Makes the World Go Round, featuring Devin the Dude, Daz Dillinger and KB, that's a banger. For Real, and pretty much everything else on the album. This is my favorite Scarface album, and I'm sure if I put together an all-time list, it's going in my top five. I know many will disagree, but this is a tie with Life After Death for my favorite album of 1997. It's hard to compare it to Life After Death with that being a double CD, but for the 12 songs on it, they can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with anything, there's no skips at all. The album was a huge success for Scarface going platinum and peaking at number one on both the Billboard 200 and the top R&B and hip-hop chart. This would be Scarface's first number one album and also its highest grossing. Scarface will continue to drop classic music and is regarded as one of the greatest artists in hip hop history and in my opinion, he's the real king of the South. March would end with three releases on March 25th. First, we get the debut album from Tracy Lee with Many Faces. Highlights include Many Faces, The Theme is Party Time, Big Will, Stars in the East, Keep Your Hands High, and more. This is a pretty good album. The theme was a hit, but the album had moderate success peaking at number 111 on the Billboard 200 and 33 on the top R&B and hip hop chart. Tracy Lee will return in 2000 with more music. West Coast great Warren G returned with his sophomore album, Take a Look Over Your Shoulder. Highlights include Annie Mae, where he reconnects with the late Nate Dogg, Smoking Me Out, Reality, We Brings Heat, The Sheriff and More. This is another solid album by Warren G going gold and charting in many countries including the UK, Germany, New Zealand and Belgium. It peaked at number 11 on the Billboard 200 and number 4 on the top R&B and hip hop chart. Warren G will continue his strong run and his return in 1999. Our final release of March 25th 
would be the posthumous masterpiece from the late legend, the notorious B.I.G., whom recently passed on March 9th. What can I say that hasn't been said about the album? It was a double CD that was loaded from start to finish with great music. There was Somebody's Gotta Die, Kick in the Door, What's Beef, Ends Bleed, Notorious Thugs featuring Bone Thugs and Harmony and everything else. This album had everything you could ask for. Storytelling so detailed you can visualize the entire song. Somebody's Gotta, Ends Bleed and I Got a Story to Tell are examples of storytelling at its finest. He has songs for the parties like Hypnotize the Mo Money Mo Problems that'll keep you dancing or nodding. The album was one of the greatest in history and was one of the most successful albums in hip hop history going diamond, peaking at number one on both the Billboard Top 200 and the Top R&B and Hip Hop chart. The album was the last complete work from the Notorious B.I.G. and its most praised. Suave House's Crime Boss returned with his sophomore album, Conflicts and Confusion. Highlights would include Chemical Imbalance featuring 8-Ball, No Friends, Warning, and more. The album was a success for Suave House, peaking at number 27 on the Billboard 200. This would be Crime Boss's most successful album, but would also be his last with Suave House. Our final release of the day would come from former ghetto boy Big Mike with this sophomore album, Still Serious. Highlights include Players to Governors, Seal It With The Kiss, Bourbons and Impalas, Everybody Wants A Name, Southern Comfort featuring Mystical and more. This is another good album by Big Mike peaking at number 16 on the Billboard 200 and number 3 on the top R&B and hip hop chart. Big Mike will return in 1999 and continue making music into the 2000s. The Artifacts return with their sophomore album, That's Them. Highlights will include Artifacts, To Your Chest, The Ultimate, The Interview, and more. This is a pretty good album, but the album was less successful than their debut album, peaking at number 134 on the Billboard 200 and number 25 on the top R&B and hip hop chart. The duo would break up shortly after this album and release solo material before coming back together in the 2000s. May would open with the debut album from Oakland and No Limit group Steady Mobbing with their debut album Premeditated Drama. Highlights would include the hit single If I Could Change featuring Master P that was dope, West to South, It's On and more. The album peaked at number 29 on the Billboard 200 and number 6 on the top R&B and hip hop chart. Steady Mob will return in 1998 with their follow up album on No Limit. Our next release will come from New Orleans Great Juvenile with this sophomore album and the first album released by Cash Money Records, Soldier Rags. Highlights will include Soldier Rags, I Did That, Welcome to the Section, Roll with them and more. The album was a huge regional success selling over 200,000 copies and was the catalyst that led to Juvenile's big breakout in 1998 with 400 degrees. May 20th would give us three releases. First we get the debut album from the Boot Camp Click with For The People. Highlights would include Heads Are Ready Part 2, Watch Your Step, Go For Yours, Okie Dokie and more. The album peaked at number 15 on the Billboard 200 and number 4 on the Top R&B and Hip Hop chart. The Boot Camp Click would join back together in the 2000s and continue to release their individual products in between crew releases. Our next release of the day would come from the legend KRS-One with this third album, I Got Next. Highlights would include the classic single Step Into A World, The MC, I Got Next, the Real Hip Hop Part 2, Can't Stop Won't Stop, Blow, Over Your Head and more. The album went gold and peaked at number 3 on the Billboard 200 and number 2 on the Top R&B and Hip Hop chart. KRS once again showed why he is one of the greatest to ever touch a mic, joining LL Cool J, Ice Cube and Scarface as some of the few rappers to have a successful 10 year run from the 80s. Our final release of the day would come from No Limit Records with the I'm Bout It soundtrack. The soundtrack was to Masterpiece's movie I'm Bout It. 
Highlights will include the classic meal ticket by Master P, 8-Ball, and MJG and UGK. The classic How You Do That There by Young Bleed, featuring Master P and CeeLo, which is one of the biggest songs of 97, ruling air raids and rocking all parties and clubs. There was If I Could Change by Master P and Steady Marvin that was also featured on Steady Marvin's album, released a few weeks ago. What You Think by Mystical, Come On by E-40 and Be Legit, Faces of Death by EA Ski and more. This is a dope soundtrack that had great success going double platinum and peaking at number 4 on the Billboard 200 and number 1 on the top R&B and hip hop chart. The Jungle Brothers will kick the summer off with their fourth album, Raw Deluxe. Highlights include Brains, True Blue, Moving Along, Changes, Black Man on the Track and more. The album had moderate success peaking at number 37 on the top R&B and hip hop chart. The album was one of the better albums of the year and is underrated in my opinion. The Jungle Brothers will return in 2000 with the follow up album. Legendary group The Wu-Tang Clan returned with their sophomore album, the classic Wu-Tang Forever. The album would be a double CD led by the single Triumph that was dope. There was also Reunited that's a banger, Scary Hours, Visions, A Better Tomorrow, Older Gods, It's Yours, Impossible and more. The album was a huge success going four times platinum and peaking at number one on both the Billboard 200 and the top R&B chart, as well as charting high and reaching number one in many countries. The Wu once again came with the great album that was one of the best of the year. They will continue to release music solo and as a group throughout the 2000s. We'd get three releases on June 17th, beginning with the debut album from Houston great Lil Kiki with Don't Mess With Texas. Highlights include the Southern classic Southside, Still Pimpin' Pins, Don't You Know, Serious Smoke and more. The album has success peaking at number 43 on the Billboard 200 and number 20 on the top R&B and hip hop chart. Lil Kiki will return on 1998 and continue releasing music with members of the legendary Screwed Up Click. The Lost Boys return with their sophomore album, Love, Peace and Nappiness. Highlights include Me and My Crazy World, Love, Peace and Nappiness, Tight Situations and more. The album was a success for the Lost Boys going gold and peaking at number 9 on the Billboard 200 and number 2 on the top R&B and hip hop chart. The Lost Boys would return in 1999 with their final album as a complete group. Our final release of the day would come from Queen's Grace Capone and Noriega with their debut album The War Report. Highlights include Bloody Money, T-O-N-Y that was pretty dope, Driver's Seat, Iraq, Halfway Thugs, LA LA, their reply disc to the Dog Pounds New York New York, and more. The album peaked at number 21 on the Billboard 200 and number 4 on the top R&B and hip hop chart. This is a dope album and great debut for the duo. They will have a great return in the 2000s while Nori held the group down as a solo artist. June will close with the biggest day of the year with the whopping 8 releases. First we get the debut album from Crew with the Dirty 30. Highlights will include Just Another Case featuring Slick Rick, Nothing But featuring Black Rob, Fresh Wild and Bold, Bubbling Goings Tales and more. The album peaked at number 102 on the Billboard 200 and number 26 on the top R&B and hip hop chart. This would be Crew's only album as they disbanded shortly after the album's release. Our next release of the day will come from horrorcore legends The Insane Clown Posse with their fourth album, The Great Malenko. Highlights include Hocus Pocus, How Many Times, Halls of Illusions, Boogie Woogie Woo and more. The album was a big hit going platinum and peaking at number 63 on the Billboard 200. The Insane Clown Posse will continue to release music and venture off into wrestling with Juggalos Wrestling. Our next release of the day will come from the Beat Nuts 
with their sophomore album, Stone Crazy. Highlights include the hit single, Off the Books, that was also the breakthrough song for Big Pun, Bless the Mic, Do You Believe, Ends No, World Famous and More. The album garnered buzz for the Beat Nuts, performed much better than their debut album, peaking at number 154 on the Billboard 200 and number 38 on the top R&B and hip hop chart. The Beat Nuts would follow up the album in 1999 and continue releasing music into the 2000s. June 24th would also bring the long-awaited debut album from Death Rolls to Lady of Rage with Necessary Roughness. Highlights include Necessary Roughness, Big Bad Lady featuring Tupac, Show Shot, Raw Deal, Rough Rugged and Raw featuring Daz and Snoop Dogg, Semes and more. This is a pretty good album that has some success peaking at number 32 on the Billboard 200 and number 7 on the top R&B and hip hop chart. This would be Rage's only album released on Death Row Records as she would focus more on acting. The next release of the day will come from the late Craig Mack with this sophomore album, Operation Get Down. Highlights would include Can You Still Love Me, his single Jock and My Style, Rap Hangover, Sit Back and Relax, Today's Forecast, and more. This was Craig's first album post Bad Boy and it was pretty good. It didn't have the success of his debut album but it was still able to chart pretty high, peaking at number 46 on the Billboard 200 and number 17 on the top R&B and hip hop chart. We get one more album from Craig before his untimely passing. The next release of the day will come from New Orleans legend Mia X with her sophomore album, Unladylike. Highlights would include You Don't Wanna Go to War, featuring Master P, Silk the Shocker, See Murder and Mystical, that's hard as hell and one of the best songs from No Limit Records and was one of the biggest songs of the year in the South and Midwest. There's I Pity You, that's another banger, Who's Got the Clout featuring Mystical, Mama's Family and more. Unladylike was the most complete work from No Limit Records and my favorite album from the label. This was Mia's greatest album and solidified her place as one of the queens of the South. Unladylike was the best female album of 1997 in my opinion. It had great lyrics and production. Mia shows versatility singing, doing poetry, and touching on various topics. She showed that leading the soldiers on the tank as she did on numerous posse cuts by being a standout MC was no problem and was handled with ease. The album was a success going gold and peaked at number 21 on the Billboard 200 and number two on the top R&B and hip hop chart. The next release of the day will come from Chicago legend Twista with this third album, Adrenaline Rush. Highlights include Adrenaline Rush featuring Psycho Drama, that's a banger, Overdose, that's insane, where he goes crazy over the beat and throws a few shots at Bone, letting them know that they don't want it with him, Mobster's Anthem, Unsolved Mystery, It Feels So Good, Emotions, Get It Wet, and everything else on the album. Twisted returned with an updated style that took his career to legend status. I think Adrenaline Rush is an amazing album and is in my top 15 all time. This is another album that has no skips and is underrated and should be mentioned with the greatest albums of all times, as it can go song for song with any album and is a tie for the best album to come out of the Midwest with Bones East 1999, in my opinion. The album was a success going platinum and peaked at number 77 on the Billboard 200 and number 13 on the top R&B and hip hop chart. Twister was signed with Rockefeller Records and returned in 2004 with another dope album. The final release of one of the largest release days in history will come from the legend Wyclef with Wyclef John presents the carnival. Highlights would include Apocalypse, Bubble Goose, We Trying to Stay Alive, Jaspora, Gunpowder, Guantanamera, and more. This is a great album that was very flexible with hip-hop, reggae, and soul. 
Wyclef made music that touched you in many ways and fed your mind with thoughtful music. Wyclef came with a change from the normal hip hop that was refreshing and well produced. The album was a huge success commercially and critically, going double platinum, selling over 2 million copies, and it peaked at number 16 on the Billboard 200, number 4 on the top R&B and hip hop chart, while also charting very highly in other countries like Germany, Sweden, and New Zealand. Wyclef would put on his producer's hat for a few years and return in 2000 with another album. July would open with the sophomore album from New Orleans great BG with this All On You Volume 1. Highlights include In My City, Silent, Round My Way featuring Juvenile, Cash Money, Gangsta, and more. This is a pretty good album that helped strengthen Cash Money in the South as they got closer to their big breakout. On July 15th, we get the debut album from Virginia legend Missy Elliott with Super Duper Fly. Highlights include all of our singles that were all smash hits and Hit em With The He featuring Lil' Kim, Sock It To Me featuring The Brat, The Rain, Beat Me 911 featuring 702, There's They Don't Wanna F With Me featuring Timberland and Aaliyah, plus more. Super Duper Fly was a dope album that's loaded with R&B heavy songs that are catchy and laid the blueprint for the black ground sound that became prevalent in the music of Aaliyah, Genuine, Timberland, and Magoo, and other black ground artists that would dominate the late 90s. This is a dope album that perfectly displayed Missy's versatility and creativeness. The album went platinum and peaked at number 3 on the Billboard 200 and number 1 on the top R&B and hip hop chart. Missy would be a major force in hip hop as a producer, writer, and artist racking up a countless amount of awards as the most decorated female MC of all time. The following week on July 22nd, we get the debut album from P. Diddy with No Way Out. Highlights include the classic singles I'll Be Missing You, Victory, All About the Benjamins, and Can't Nobody Hold Me Down. There was also Young G's featuring the notorious B.I.G. and Jay-Z that keeps you locked in from start to finish is This The End featuring Twister that's also very dope, I Love You Baby and more. This was a dope album with great singles that still get parties rocking. The album was one of the biggest of the decade going 7 times platinum and topping the Billboard 200 along with reaching number 1 in Australia, Canada, Switzerland, the UK and other countries. Diddy would rack up awards of all kinds including 2 Grammys. July would close with 3 releases on July 29th. First, we get the debut album from Rampage with Scout's Honor by way of Blood. Highlights include Flip Mode is the Squad, Wild for the Night, Hall of Fame, Conquer the World, and more. The album had moderate success, peaking at number 65 on the Billboard 200 and number 15 on the top R&B and hip hop chart. Rampage will continue releasing music with the Flip Mode Squad and return solo in 2007. Our next release of the day will come from Miami great Trick Daddy with this debut album Based on a True Story. Highlights include Based on a True Story Part 2, They Don't Live Long, I'll Be Your Player, Going Down Like That, But You Can't Help It and more. The album will be a huge regional success selling over 300,000 copies in the southeast. This would be the only album that doesn't include the word thug in the name and Trick Daddy would have his big breakthrough in 1998. Our final release of the day would come from Cleveland Legends, Bone Thugs and Harmony with their third album, The Art of War. Highlights would include their lead single, Look Into My Eyes, that was also a big hit on the Batman and Robin soundtrack. Handle the Vibe, Body Rot, Ready for War, it's All Real, If I Could Teach the World, Thug Love featuring Tupac, You Ain't Bone, Diss and Twister, Do or Die and 3-6 Mafia, and more. The album was one of the best of the year and one of the highest grossing going four times platinum and peaking at number one on the Billboard 200 and charting high in many countries. The album would close out the 90s for Bone as members would release solo projects 
and did features before coming back together for their 2000 album. August would open with the release of two albums on the 5th. Our first release would be the debut album from Wu-Tang affiliates Kill Army with Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars. Highlights include Dress to Kill, Universal Soldiers, Wake Up, All's Fair in Love and War, and more. The album had moderate success peaking at number 34 on the Billboard 200 and number 10 on the top R&B and hip hop chart. Kill Army will return in 1998 with more success the second time around. Our other release of the day would be the How To Be A Player soundtrack. Highlights include Big Bad Mama by Foxy Brown and Drew Hill, In The Wind by A Ball and MJG, Troublesome by Tupac, How To Be A Player by Master P, Silk The Shocker and Fiend, The Usual Suspects by DMX, Ja Rule, Hussein Fatal, Mike Geronimo and Cormega, Down With Us by Redman and more. This is a good soundtrack that has success going gold and peaking at number 7 on the Billboard 200 and number 2 on the top R&B and hip hop chart. Our next release will come from OC with his sophomore album, Jewels. Highlights include My World, War Games, The Chosen One, Far From Yours, Jewels and more. OC had one of the better albums of the year with great production and lyrics. I didn't hear this album back then and I'm wondering what held it back because it's really great and stands out from everything else. Our next release of the day will come from Digging in the Crates member Diamond D with this sophomore album, Hatred, Passions and Infidelity. Highlights will include Flowing, The Hiatus, Pains and Strife featuring Fife Dog and Pete Rock, Five Fingers of Death featuring Big L, Lord Finesse, AG, and Fat Joe. This one featuring Busta Rhymes and more. This is a good album that had moderate success peaking at number 40 on the top R&B and hip hop chart. Diamond D will return in 2003 with more music while also releasing features on the Digging in the Crates members albums. Our final release of the day will come from West Coast legend Coolio with this third album, My Soul. Highlights include 2 minutes and 21 seconds of funk, Hit em featuring Razzcast, Homeboy and more. The album went gold and peaked at number 39 on the Billboard 200 and number 49 on the top R&B and hip hop chart. The album will be Coolio's last of the 90s until its return in 2001. September will open with the release of New Orleans legend Master P's sixth album, Ghetto D. Highlights include Ghetto D, Let's Get Em, We Riders, Weed and Money, Bourbons and Lax, and the classic Make Em Say Uh. The album went three times platinum and peaked the number one on both the Billboard 200 and the top R&B and hip hop charts. Master P will continue his strong run venturing into movies and sports as he expanded his empire. We get three releases on September 16th beginning with the sophomore album The Grave Diggers with The Pick, The Sickle, and The Shovel. Highlights include Unexplained, Pit of Snakes, The Night the Earth Cried, Elimination Process, and more. The album was a critical success but did not meet commercial expectations. They were joined back up in 2001 for another run. West Coast great Mac-10 returned with this sophomore album based on a true story. Highlights include Chicken Hawk 2, Backyard Boogie, Can't Stop, Only in California, What You Need, a remake of N.W.A.'s Dope Man, and more. The album was a success, going gold and peaking at number 14 on the Billboard 200 and number 5 on the top R&B and hip hop chart. Mac-10's big run will continue solo and as a part of the West Side Connection into the 2000s. Our final release of the day will come from the legend Busta Rhymes with this sophomore album, When Disaster Strikes. Highlights include the classic single, Put Your Hands Where My Eyes Can See, that was one of the biggest songs of the year, Dangerous, that was another huge hit for the year, The Whole World Looking At Me, Survival Hungry, Rhymes Galore, The Body Rock featuring Mace, Rampage, and Diddy, Get Off My Block, and more. This is a dope album and it helped take Buster's career to the next level, being a huge hit going platinum 
and peaking at number three on the Billboard 200 and number one on the top R&B and hip hop chart. Busta had one of the better albums of the year that I can appreciate a lot more than I did back then. We get two major releases on September 23rd. First, we get the third album from Organized Confusion with The Equinox. Highlights include nine times out of 10, questions, numbers, in vitro, somehow, some way, and more. The album received great critical reviews, but didn't have as much commercial success, peaking at number 141 on the Billboard 200 and number 29 on the top R&B and hip hop chart. This was a good album, but unfortunately it would be the group's last, as they would disband shortly after. After leaving the group, Feral Munch would have great success during the late 90s and the early 2000s. Legends EPMD came back together for their fifth album, Back to Business. Highlights include Richter Scale, The Joint, Last Man Standing, Never Seen Before, KIM featuring Redman, Put On, and more. This was a good album and a good return for EPMD as they got back to business like the album said and produced another gold album. It peaked at number 16 on the Billboard 200 and number 4 on the top R&B and hip hop chart. EPMD satisfied their fans with the return and would do it again in 1999. Our final release of September would come from Chicago legend Common with One Day It'll All Make Sense. Highlights include Invocation, Retrospect for Life featuring Lauren Hill where he deals with the thoughts and fears of fatherhood and deleting the pregnancy that's pretty dope. G.O.D. featuring CeeLo. All Night Long featuring Erica Badu. Stolen Moments featuring Black Thought and more. This was a dope album that received critical acclaim and peaked at number 62 on the Billboard 200 and number 12 on the top R&B and hip hop chart. Common will continue his stellar career crossing over into acting into the 2000s. We get two releases on October 14th, beginning with Sound Bombing from Raucous Records. This was the first installment of their Sound Bombing series, displaying their wealth of talent. Highlights include Flipside by R.A. The Rugged Man, Till My Heart Stops by R.A. The Rugged Man, a freestyle by Most Def and Talib Kweli, If You Can Huh by Most Def, Universal Magnetic, and more. This is a dope album for underground hip hop fans that received critical acclaim, but not as much commercial success. Our other release of the day will come from the legend LL Cool J with Phenomenon. Highlights include the classic 4321 featuring Red Man, Method Man, DMX and Cannabis, Father, Another Dollar, Starsky and Hutch and more. This album was more geared towards the ladies and it was a great success going platinum, peaking at number 7 on the Billboard 200 and number 4 on the top R&B and hip hop chart. The song 4321 would get LL and Broad in another beef, this time with Cannabis, for asking to get the mic tattoo on his arm. He dissed Cannabis on his verse on a song after Cannabis recorded his verse, leading Cannabis to respond with second round knockout featuring Mike Tyson. The beef would be entertained with both artists dropping great diss records, but would fizzle out after LL dropped this diss and Cannabis lost his backing from Wyclef. We get two releases on October 21st. Our first release will come from Salt and Pepper with their fifth album, Brand New. Highlights include Are You Ready, Friends, Giddy Up, Hold On, and more. The album was a success going gold and peaking at number 37 on the Billboard 200 and number 16 on the top R&B and hip hop chart. This would be the final album for Salt and Pepper as they now do tours and have been honored with Lifetime Achievement Awards by the Grammys in 2021 and they received a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame in 2022. Our other release of the day will come from the supergroup The Firm, consisting of AZ, Nas, Foxy Brown, and Nature. Highlights include Phone Tap This Dope, Five Minutes to Flush, I'm Leaving featuring Noriega, that features arguably his best verse that also set his solo career on fire in preparation for his upcoming solo debut. There's Desperados featuring Cannabis, who, like Nori, 
dropped a verse that created more anticipation for its debut, there's Firm Fiasco and more. I thought this was a dope album, but for some reason it receives a lot of criticism. It's considered a flop by Dr. Dre, but the album peaked at number one on both the Billboard 200 and Top R&B and Hip Hop charts, but also charting high in multiple countries. This would be the only album from the group, as they would break up, but still work together in various forms. October will close with four releases on October 28th. First, we get the sophomore album from the Loonies with Lunatic Music. Highlights include Hypnotize featuring Redman, Killers on the Payroll, Funkin' Over Nothing featuring Too Short, Highest in the Industry featuring E-40 and Be Legit, plus more. The album wasn't as successful as the debut, but it did go gold and peaked at number 34 on the Billboard 200 and would close out the 90s for the Loonies as they would return in 2002. Our next release of the day will come from the Hot Boys with their debut album, Get It How You Live. Highlights include We On Fire, Shot Set It Off, Block Burner, Neighborhood Superstar, Dirty World, and more. Cash Money locked down the Bayou with their releases in 97 and got their label deal with Universal in preparation for their big breakthrough in 1998. Bay Area legend Spice One returned with this fifth album, the Black Barcelini. Highlights include The Thug and Me, Recognized Game featuring Too Short and Ice T, Player Man, Diamonds, Down Payment of Heaven, and more. This is another good album from Spice One, and it has some success peaking at number 28 on the Billboard 200 and number 3 on the top R&B and hip hop chart. Spice will return in 1999 to close out a great decade. A final release of the day will come from Harlem great Mace with his debut album, Harlem World. His singles were all dope and it feels so good, 24 Hours to Live, featuring the Rough Riders and Black Rob, and Looking at Me. Other highlights include The Play Away featuring 8 Ball and MJG, Wanna Act featuring Busta Rhymes, I Need To Be, and more. The album was a huge success, making Mace a superstar and one of the biggest names in hip hop. It went four times platinum and peaked at number one on both the Billboard 200 and the Top R&B and Hip Hop chart. Mace had a huge year, both as an artist and ghost riding. He would ride the success and return in 1999 with his follow-up album. November will open with four releases on the 4th. Our first release will come from Mike Geronimo with his sophomore album, Vendetta. Highlights include the single, Nothing Moves But The Money featuring Diddy that was dope, Vendetta, For The Family, Street Life, Usual Suspects, this time featuring DMX, Ja Rule, the late Gaddafi of the Outlaws, and The Locks. This is a pretty good album, but it didn't have the commercial success peaking at number 112 on the Billboard 200 and number 20 on the top R&B and hip hop chart. This album will close out the 90s for Mike Geronimo and he will return in 2002. Memphis Legends 3-6 Mafia returned with their third album, Chapter 2, World Domination. Highlights include Hitter MF, Profit Posse, Spill My Blood, Gun Claps, Body Parts 2 and more. 3-6 Mafia was continued to break through and the album eventually went gold and it peaked at number 40 on the Billboard 200 and number 18 on the top R&B and hip hop charts. 3-6 Mafia had began an upward trajectory that will continue well into the 2000s. Our next release will come from the legend Jay-Z with this sophomore album in my lifetime volume one highlights include the hit singles always be my sunshine featuring babyface and foxy brown and the city is mine featuring black street there's also imaginary players that's dope a million and one questions where i'm from that's a classic and more the album went platinum and peaked at number three on the billboard 200 and number two on the top r&b and hip-hop charts Jay-Z had quickly became a star and was on the cusp of superstardom that would be reached with the release of his next album. Our final release of the day will come from the legend Rakim with his debut album, The 18th Letter. 
His singles, Guess Who's Back and It's Been a Long Time, were both dope and brought Rakim back getting radio and video play ahead of the album release. Other highlights include the Been a Long Time Suave House remix, the 18th Letter, The Mystery, When I'm Flowing, and more. This is a good album and great return for Rakim, going gold and peaking at number 4 on the Billboard 200 and number 1 on the Top R&B and Hip Hop chart. Rakim will ride the success and return in 1999 with his follow-up. November 11th would bring four releases. First we get the second release of the year from BG with It's All On You Volume 2. Highlights include What You Wanna Do, Get Your Shine On, Living Legend, Clean Up Man and Stay In Line that are both very dope. This is a good album from BG and one of if not his best album. The album will be re-released in 1999 after the label's blow up. The next release of the day will come from MC8 with his third album, Last Man Standing. Highlights include Under Attack, King of Pimpish, Compton for Death, The Business, Who's the Man and more. The album peaked at number 64 on the Billboard 200 and 13 on the Top R&B and Hip Hop chart. Eight will return in 1999 to close out a great decade. Next we get the sophomore album from Mystical with Unpredictable. Highlights include The Man Right Here, Born to Be a Soldier, Murder 2, Unpredictable and more. The album was another big hit for No Limit going platinum with The Man Right Here being a big hit and the album peaked at number 3 on the Billboard 200 and number 1 on the top R&B and hip hop chart. Mystical's run will continue to get stronger with its big return in 1998. Our final release of the day will come from Timberland and Magoo with their debut album, Welcome to Our World. The album was led by Up Jumps the Boogie, which was a huge hit and one of the biggest songs of the year, and the follow-up single Love to Love You was another huge hit. Album highlights include Smoke in the Air, Writing Rhymes, Feel It, Clock Strikes, and more. This is a good album with top-notch production, as you would expect from Timberland. It went platinum and peaked at number 33 on the Billboard 200 and number 9 on the top R&B and hip hop chart. Timbaland and Magoo will return in 2001 with their follow up album. Our next release will come from Del the Funky Homo Sapien with this third album, Future Development. Highlights include Lyric Licking, Stress the World, Corner Story, Town to Town, X-Files, Del's Nightmare and more. This was a dope album by Dell, having some success selling over 400,000 copies worldwide. This would close out the 90s for Dell, and he would return in 2000. Our next release would come from Memphis legend MJG with this debut album, No More Glory. The album's lead single, That Girl, was dope and a good lead for the album. Other highlights include The Black Mac Is Back featuring 8 Ball, Keep Your Mind, Middle of the Night featuring 8 Ball, Hip Hop Voodoo, Shine and Recline featuring 8 Ball and more. This was a dope album that had great success going gold and peaked at number 20 on the Billboard 200 and number 4 on the Top R&B and Hip Hop chart. MJG would join 8 Ball in 98 on his debut album Lost and they would come back together as a group in 99. On November 25th, we get two releases beginning with Philly legend Will Smith with this debut album, Big Willie Style. Will singles Miami, Men in Black, and Getting Jiggy With It were all massive hits and some of the biggest songs of the year, with Men in Black and Getting Jiggy With It both winning Grammys. Other highlights include Y'all Know, Chasing Forever, It's All Good, and more. The album was a huge success, racking up awards including Grammys, MTV Awards, Billboard Awards, as well as selling over 9 million copies. It peaked at number 8 on the Billboard 200 and number 9 on the top R&B and hip hop charts while hitting number 1 and charting very high in a number of countries. Will will return in 1999 with another album that would be a huge success. Our other release of the day would be the second posthumous album from the late legend Tupac with Are You Still Down. 
Highlights include Hellraiser, I Wonder If Heaven Got a Ghetto, I'm Getting Money, which was a remake of Straight Ballin' off of the Thug Life album, 16 on Death Row, Nothing to Lose, F All Y'all, and more. This is a good album with a good collection of old and new Tupac music with good production. The album went four times platinum and peaked at number two on the Billboard 200 and number one on the top R&B and hip hop chart. More posthumous albums would be released. The year would close with the debut album from Queen Pen with My Melody. Highlights include her single, Party Ain't a Party That Was Dope, Queen of the Click, Man Behind the Music, I'm Gonna Blow Up and more. The album peaked at number 78 on the Billboard 200 and number 13 on the top R&B and hip hop chart. Queen Pan will return in 2001 and continue to release music into the 2000s. 1997 was a year that saw the East Coast artists have the biggest albums of the year, but was the first year where we see artists from the South on top for the majority of the time. The shiny suit era will be ushered in that will lead to the bling era. 97 was a great year for hip hop with plenty of variety and some of the best music of the 90s, making it without a doubt one of the best years of hip hop. Once again, I thank you for your valuable time and I'm throwing two fingers in the air until the next time we meet.